Puppy protocol. Today we're going to talk about what to do with puppies. They can be your best friend, they can be the most joy in your day, or they can be the most challenging and most frustrating appointment you have on your books. So we're going to talk about what age you should start and what services you should offer. And we're going to segue into how to teach, how to train, and then finally, we're gonna talk about how to get your families on board to help you out and be a part of your team for your dog's grooming future. All right, puppies, we love puppies. Puppies have to be handled very, very carefully. They're brand new in our life. We have to make sure that they understand we're not trying to kill them. I say to clients on a regular basis when they call and say, I have a new puppy, I say, Puppy torture is holding them still and asking them to hold still. As far as they're concerned, you're, gonna, you're trying to kill them, you're trying to drown them in the tub. You're trying to break their leg when you're holding it. You're, they're convinced that you're trying to kill them. And that is not what we're trying to do. So one of the best things we can do is that initial visit on the phone is set us, ourselves in that whole situation up for success. We're going to tell mom and dad, babies need to be handled very carefully. We need to make sure that we do a very, very short introductory visit with that puppy because we want to make that first experience, which is so vital to their mental outlook for grooming for their entire life. We don't want to traumatize them and it's scary. No matter how you slice it, it's going to be scary. So we want to make it as best as we can. How old should we start a puppy? Everybody's opinion is a little bit different, but most of us agree that three and a half to four months old is probably your ideal range. You want them at that age because first, their immunity is fairly strong. So they have gotten most of their shots. They're not quite done, but they're close. So their immunity should be fairly strong. Two, it is right at the right age that they've had some time to be in that home with that family and adapt and settle a bit and start figuring out their personality and starting to gain a little bit of confidence because they have some security but they are still young enough that we don't have to stress or worry about them being super aggressive or argumentative because even though they're going to argue because they're a baby, it's not a big argue because they're small. Their size is small still. So they don't have the strength. They don't have the muscle. They don't have the power and they aren't typically aggressive. They usually are scared and we like to work with scared because we can convince them that we're not going to hurt them. So we really want to get them at that ideal age where they're still pliable and moldable and shapeable and make sure that they understand we are here to make them look good, but we're not here to kill them. So we tell mom and dad, don't expect a lot. You need to understand that that first visit is like asking a young infant to sit still in a barber chair and don't move. And when you use those types of analogies, it starts to click because let's be honest, they've tried to get the puppy to hold still for something and that puppy did not cooperate. And they were convinced that they were hurting the puppy because the puppy whined and pulled and yanked. And so they went, oh, okay. And so we want to make sure that they understand it is very important that we make this first impression as good as we can. So we're not going to expect a lot. We're not going to demand that that puppy stands still perfectly for that grooming. We're going to ask that puppy to tolerate certain things. We're going to ask them to understand what we are asking for and that they're going to have a positive outcome if they listen to us and that if they don't, we're going to have the patience to let them get through that. So that is something that when you talk to an owner, especially an owner that has children or have had children, they can wrap their head around that a whole lot faster than maybe somebody who doesn't because they don't get how to teach and puppies need teaching. So we're going to give them our best advice, which is we're going to do with that first initial visit very gently. We're going to give a bath. We're going to give a, we're going to introduce them to the process. And it is going to be a process to get them to understand what it is that they need to do for us so that we can safely do our job. So we're going to give them 
that baby step first puppy bath, which is a bath and some drying and introducing them to that process. And we're going to do brushing and combing and do tidy areas. We're just going to do little minimal things like pads and sanitary and light thinning shears in front of the eyes to introduce them to be having their face hold the held still, introduce them to holding their, their legs still. They've never been forced to do that. And in our situation, in our environment, we have to force them to do that. We, they have to let us do our job. And the more they argue, the more likely it is that they are going to get injured. And we do not want that. That is the last thing we want. We want them to like the process because if they like it, they're much more cooperative and the whole situation is less stressful and everybody wins. So that initial visit, I really, really, really strongly suggest you do not ever put them through a full grooming. They are not ready, number one, mentally, Physically, they have baby hair. It's infant hair. They do not have any type of undercoat yet. So there is nothing to make that haircut look even remotely halfway decent. And it absolutely is gonna look like trash within a couple of days because it's baby hair. It's gonna look terrible. Their confirmation isn't there. They don't have the muscle yet. They don't have the height. They don't have any of that growth yet. So when you explain to a client that it really is not what's best for their puppy, as well as it's not going to look good at all, and that you could risk seriously injuring that dog at minimum, and you definitely can set them up for a lifelong failure of absolutely hating grooming their whole life. And let's be honest, we know those dogs and they are the ones that end up escalating and escalating into where we can't work on them unless they get in the right situation, which doesn't always happen. So we really wanna take serious care with that and make sure that we are giving all that information to the client and either one, allowing them to make the right decision and do what's best for their baby, or we just tell them, I don't do that on puppies. I did that in my whole career. As soon as I realized that when I gave that puppy the first haircut and it was traumatized and it stood there and let me do it, but the next time it came in, the owner complained because the haircut wasn't even and the puppy was screaming and crying and fighting me 10 times harder the second time, I said, whoa, this is crazy. I need to make some changes here. I need to pay attention. So when you learn dog behavior and you understand psychology on dogs, it makes so much sense. We need to baby step them into this process. And if you are good with your clients at communicating, you're gonna find it very simple to explain why and why you will not do anything more than that on that first visit because you absolutely care more about that dog's long-term mental status on this process because it affects all of it. If they're not mentally on board, they're gonna give you a hard time and you're more likely not gonna be able to give them a good haircut and you're definitely not gonna be able to keep them safe. So we really wanna make sure that they understand that and that we stand firm in our conviction that it is what's best for the dog. Forcing them through that haircut that first time is never good. So we wanna talk about now training, teaching. Table time is a special time. Make sure that you have a routine figured out for your table because that is so helpful for a puppy to know what to expect. When they know exactly what to expect, they settle down. All of a sudden they go, oh, she's going here next. Oh, he's doing that next. I know what's coming next. So the stress goes down. Make sure you are, are, are keeping with a nice solid routine every single time and you just talk them through it. Make sure your tone is encouraging, supportive, confidence building. That's what we're trying to do is build that relationship. And if you're grooming in silence, you're not going to have that. So we don't want to set them up for being scared and shocked when you go, oh, stop that. Oh, uh, don't do that. We wanna use noise distraction to our benefit. We wanna make sure that we distract when they're giving us the behavior that we don't want and we reward when they give us the behavior we do want. So some examples of teaching a puppy, for them, it's mainly pressure and release. You're going to ask them to give you a foot. We're not gonna ask them to hold their foot still while we are trying to scissor or cut nails when they first come in for their first time. We're not gonna ask that of them, not initially. At first, all we're gonna do is we're gonna ask them to let us hold their foot. And at first they're gonna say, sure, hold my foot, it's fine, I don't have a problem. And then within moments, they want their foot back. And the moment you don't give them their foot back, that's when the argument happens. They're gonna pitch a fit, they're a child. They're pitching a fit, give me my foot, give me my foot. You just be patient. Be kind, be safe, make sure that you have protected them. They can't hurt themselves, but you hold on to that foot 
and you let them know, this is mine, I get to hold it. I get to hold it. It's okay, you're okay, let me hold it. They're not allowed to bite, that's never okay, but they're allowed to pitch a fit because they're a baby and they're learning. So we have to have the patience to let them pitch that fit and figure out that this is not working. If they don't get their foot back, they're gonna figure out pretty quickly that this didn't work. So they're going to eventually, because it's in their nature, they're going to submit. And that is when you release pressure. The moment they submit, and it's that moment. You don't wait, you don't force through and get your scissoring done or your nails done at that moment. You immediately release pressure and reward and say, oh my gosh, what a good baby, what a good baby. And you love on them and you tell them how good they were. Then you move to the next foot and you do the same thing over and over. And, to, and honestly, it doesn't take very long. It really happens pretty quickly because puppies are very smart. They're very adaptable. So they're gonna go, oh, well, it sucked when you did that, but man, as soon as I, I let go and let you hold it, it was over. And then you get to the point where you build on those successes and you scissor the foot and you say, oh, what a good baby. And you keep moving on and moving on. And before you know it, you've gotten all those feet done and you've done it safely. And the puppy is not stress panting and freaking out and pooping and peeing and all of that it's nonsense. We don't need any of that because we're easing into it. We're taking small steps. And it all happens fairly quickly because they are that adaptable. They move quickly. So you can hold that foot, let them learn that lesson. Hold the next foot, let them learn that lesson. You've rewarded, you're rewarded. Now we're gonna pick up the clippers because now you know that you can trust I'm not, I'm not hurting you. And the moment you did what I wanted, good stuff happened. Dog behavior is not that complicated. It's, it's pretty easy to figure out. Take some educational classes on how to learn body language and how to speak dog. It's so helpful in our career. And when you're trying to teach, that's when you need it. You need to understand how to speak to them. And pressure and release is a very, very effective way. Noise distraction is very effective. If they're giving you behavior you don't want, use an, an odd noise that changes their thinking and they focus on something else. And the moment their focus is on something else, you reward them for stopping the bad behavior. So move on. Yay, they did good, okay. And we move on to the next thing. So when you are holding a face, we wanna make sure that we teach them that we're gonna hold the face still before we try to do anything. We're not going to jump in with our scissors or our clippers. We're gonna just teach them, when I hold your chin hair, I need you to let me hold it. And that means you hold your face still. You release your face to me and trust me that when you release it, it's not gonna hurt. I'm not gonna do anything bad. Nothing terrible is gonna happen. And I know it's scary, but you can trust me. And you keep reassuring. You just hold the face, just hold it. Hold it and hold it and hold it and talk to them and talk to them and talk to them. Let them pitch their fit. It will be very short-lived if you let them decide it wasn't worth it. If you force them and you hold that face still and you just go to town and you argue with them and tell them no, no, bad dog, it is bad, bad, bad. They never could escape it. They never decided that it was okay. And we wanna give them that opportunity to decide that what we're trying to do to them is not bad. And that if they let us do it and give us that good behavior, it's actually great and they have a good outcome. So we really wanna encourage them to give us the submission Submit to the behavior that we're asking for and you will be rewarded and you will be so much happier for it. And they do figure it out pretty quickly. So you really wanna make sure that you are staying consistent, keep, keep in that positive headspace that you are patient, that it's okay. They're gonna get it, it's gonna be all right. If you push it too hard and you lose your frustration, put the puppy up, give them a break because you gotta be in the right headspace. This is a really important visit and we wanna make sure that it goes the best way it can. And you're the, you're the professional here, so be professional. Have that in the back of your head. I have to have patience for this. If you don't, give that puppy to somebody else to do it. Don't, don't force it because it will end badly. So then, we're gonna move on and talk about getting the family on board. That is such an asset to include that family in your journey of teaching this dog how to tolerate what we're gonna do and making it a better experience for that dog and for you. Because if we have the dog on board and the family's doing the same things we're doing, man, it makes our job so much easier. And it's so much easier on the dog because it's not unfamiliar territory to them. They have already gotten familiar with a lot of the things that we're gonna do. So when mom and dad come after that first visit, it is super important to have conversations about what are their goals for their baby. Because after you've done that first initial visit, they're gonna think, 
next time's a haircut. We're done. Yeah, man, this dog is too long and we want a, we want a haircut. So it's your job to explain the process of puppyhood and how this is going to work. So in your salon, you're going to have your own protocol of what you do. For me, I want them to come in once a month until they are confident and safe for me to give a haircut. At that point, when we are at that place where they have been on the table, they understand what I'm asking of them, they're now safe to the degree that I can get this job done, say on a schnauzer that requires a lot of clipping on its head, that's super scary for a schnauzer puppy. And schnauzer owners really want their dogs to look like their breed from day one. And they don't understand how risky that is and how dangerous that is and how easily we can injure their puppy and how scary that is for their puppy to have vibrating equipment and tons of scissoring all around their face right from day one. So if we're doing that bath and tidy on that first one and we're easing into these haircuts, they'll do much, much better. I will tell you my, the breed that I think I've struggled with the most is Yorkies. I think Yorkies take the longest to mature on the table. I don't know why, it's just my experience, but they will take a good solid three or four baths before I feel confident in giving them a full haircut. They just, they are smart enough to know how to argue their way out of it until I go, okay, we're, you're not ready for it, so we're not gonna push you that far. We're just gonna keep being safe until you're ready. That doesn't mean you challenge, you don't challenge them every time, because we have to challenge them each time to grow and to move forward. But that means we're trying to make each one positive so that the trust is there, that safety net, they feel good about it and they've learned what your table routine is and what to expect. So they're settling down on the table and they're understanding me pitching a fit isn't gonna work anymore. So I'm just gonna give in and go ahead. And then it all starts falling into place. So on that baby that is now gone through its at least one bath and tidy, if not a few of them, then we're gonna go, we've already talked to, to mom and dad about what are their goals? Do they want all the hair off this dog? Do they want a specific breed profile? Do they want some beautiful pet trim that's really flashy and got lots of flair and it's high maintenance? So we're gonna talk about their goals and what that means. We're gonna discuss with them what is puppy coat? When does it start? How long should it last? What does that mean? Some people have an idea in their head that when we say, oh, they've, they're, they've, they're changing their puppy coat, they're blowing their puppy coat, they think that means they're gonna lose all their hair. And that typically is not the case. It's just a change in texture, but when you have, and it, and it also depends if they're a rescue and they were spayed or neutered super young. Those are factors that change, that changes the whole conversation. But puppy coat change is a really important thing to talk about where they understand. So if you don't know about puppy coat, you need to learn about puppy coat and be educated so you can educate your clients because they need to understand what that means because that is the freaking death trap, the, the Bermuda Triangle for groomers where they had their first bath and tidy, possibly a first light trimming, and then they bounce to the next groomer because they weren't happy because they didn't understand that that dog got really mad at in between and there is, there's limitations because somebody didn't educate them. We want to make sure that these puppies are worked through that puppy coat change the way the owner understands and the best way for the puppy. And for some of them, that is taking them pretty short. For others, it isn't. Sometimes it's just more frequent or we do more education with the client at home. But we really want the client to understand what to expect. When they understand what to expect and they don't listen to our recommendations, okay, that's on them. So we're gonna give them whatever we have to give them. But if they are really on board and they're really making an effort to make sure that that puppy is being maintained at home in between, and they don't understand how to maintain that puppy coat change, it's difficult, we all know this. For a pet owner at home, it's not very realistic that they are going to somehow comb their way through. So we really wanna make sure that they have all the tools that they need as far as us explaining what tools to use, talking about making sure that they understand when and how often they need to do it and what to look for, how often they need to be coming into the salon so that we make sure that they are definitely on the right schedule for that puppy. And once they get, they're getting through that puppy coat change and they're into their adult coat, then we can talk to them about what their goals are for the future and how they wanna maintain. But during that, in that part of getting them on board, you really wanna make sure you've educated them on tools, how to handle, show them, Give them every option, opportunity to learn how to do this in the best way possible so that it helps you. So this puppy comes in knowing how to stand still and be brushed and combed and that it can't get away from it. Give advice on 
Don't let them bite the equipment. It's not playtime. We don't want to tease them and we don't want to chase them with the equipment and make it a game. We want them to understand that they have a different mindset when they're up on a surface and getting worked on because it is different. And we want them to know, oh, it's work time. This is a different mindset and I need to stand still and be a big boy or a big girl. And I'm going to get away at the end of this. I'm going to have a big reward because they're going to love on me and give me cookies or whatever it is. But we've got to get them on board to understand they need to help us. So they have to mimic so many of the same things we're doing. If they're going to brush a face, we need them to hold that chin. We need them to help us help their puppy understand what we're asking of them. And it will make it so much easier for the baby. So they are going to come back easier and easier each time because they understand what to expect. And now we're on the good page. And that is our goal is setting up all these puppies from very, very young through their puppy coat change. We really want to help the owners and we want to help these dogs. So they understand we're not here to kill them. We're not going to hurt them. We really need them to trust us and gain that trust with making smart, educated decisions on how to handle them, how to teach them and how to get the family on board. I want to thank you so much for your time today, and this is Splitting Hairs, and I'm Liz Sithers. <laughs>